In this video, I'm going to discuss a setup that is, uh, I'd say, medium fi, um, something that is uh, medium quality, medium price range, something that's probably attainable for the average, I'd say, family person that might have some expendable income, but not a lot. Basically, I'm going to go through the what you need to know to set up the turntable in the first place. Some people don't understand that maybe you necessarily need a phono preamp to run a turntable. So I'm going to go through those steps as well. Okay, in this setup, I just wanted to show you that I opted for this model of turntable. It's the Project Debut Carbon. Um, I did a lot of review research, um, reading Amazon reviews and all kinds of online reviews and tutorials. And um, this is the one I opted for because it's not the cheapest thing out there, but for the bang for the buck, for my price range, um, this seemed to be the best bet. Um, I will leave a link in the description for uh, this turntable and you'll see the price on there at the time of this video. The next thing you'll see about the setup is that the platter is clear. What is a platter? Well, this is the platter. First thing I'd like to say, I'd recommend when you're listening to a record, take off the cover. Um, you may be able to manage physically by putting the turntable or putting the record in and closing the lid on it while it's playing. This particular model of turntable um, may catch the edge of the record and that's not even physically possible. I haven't tried it yet, but I would not recommend it. What I've read is that um, the, the lid will add vibrations to the turntable, which could uh, modify the listening experience or distort the audio. So let's just take the turntable lid off and I'll show you the platter. This is an aftermarket platter I bought. It's made of acrylic. The one that comes with the turntable is made of metal of some sort. I think it's aluminum. Sometimes you'll see um, a slip mats put on the platter. Um, they could be made of cloth. They can be made of cork. Maybe various other materials. This particular design, you're allowed to rest the, the record right on the platter. The nice thing about this acrylic platter is it kind of tightens the base. It kind of clar clarifies like the mid and highs and, and it just basically gives it an all around tighter, cleaner sound. Um, it's also more lightweight. So there's going to be less less to deal with spin up time wise. It also um, diminishes a lot of the uh, rumble from the bass and a lot of the uh, vibrations from, I'd say, the floor and things like that. So if you do a little reading on the acrylic um, upgrade, um, you'll see that it's about a hundred and something dollars. And if you could afford it, it's well worth the upgrade. Anyway, this is the Project Debut Carbon. Um, I have the stock cartridge on here. This is the cartridge. Um, the cartridge is what contains the needle. You're all familiar with the needle. Some people say, don't call it a needle. It's called a stylus. Well, I call it a needle and I call it a stylus. Call it what you want. It's the little metal thing that looks like a, a lot like a needle. That's why they call it a needle. What that does is it, it rides the grooves, as you might know. So the record has little grooves inside of it. Let me show you a close up of a record. This is one of my most favorite records that I own. Um, as you can see, I paid a fortune for it. I got it out of the dollar bin. Um, maybe in another tutorial, I will discuss how to clean up a record that you find in the dollar bin. But let's say I clean this up and it's pretty listenable. It has some crackles in it. It's pretty old, but it's a darn good record. And uh, I would play it for you, however, um, I, you know, you shouldn't be rubbing the record like that. I would play it for you, but I would get copyright infringements. So I'm not going to play it for you, but it's got some really good songs on it. Anyway, needless to say, the record has little grooves in it, and inside of those little grooves are microscopic, um, you know, variations that cause this needle to vibrate at a particular frequency and cause an electrical current picked up in the cartridge. It travels down the tone arm and eventually gets transmitted to a low voltage signal in the RCA cables in the back of the turntable. So, as you can see, the sound starts out as physical uh, deviations in the record. If you look closely, the grooves have um, little uh, 
ridges in them and that's what keeps the needle in the, the proper path. So these are things you may or may not know, but I'm going through them as this tutorial is for uh, somewhere between beginner and advanced. Okay, let's talk about the basic setup of this turntable. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around just a little bit so you can look at the back of the turntable. One thing to keep in mind is you need to level the turntable to get the optimum listening experience. To level the turntable, I use a bubble level on my phone. It's a pretty good app. Um, so to set up your turntable, you need to not only keep it level, but you need to know how to connect it properly to your stereo. So depending on the turntable you choose, you may have a line out option on your turntable, or you may have a phono out. Most turntables only have a phono out and it requires something called a phono preamp. A phono preamp is the next stage in the turntable's signal path. As I was describing to you earlier, the sound travels from the vibrations of the stylus in the groove down the tone arm to the RCA cables in the back of the turntable. This signal is such a very low level, weak signal that it needs to be amplified before it can even be amplified. What I mean by that is it needs to be amplified and also equalized to be even be understood by something like a receiver or preamp or power amp. The thing that's used to amplify the signal from a turntable level signal to a stereo level signal, and those are called phono and line level signals, is called a phono preamp. The equalization of this signal is required because the bass frequencies are not equal to the treble frequencies in size. The reason being, if the bass frequencies were equal to the, to the treble frequencies in size, the turntable would have to be a massive thickness just to get the bass sounds out of the stylus. So what happens is the bass signal is much, much weaker than the treble signal on a turntable. Okay, this is my phono preamp. I opted for a halfway decent one. This one is from Cambridge, and it is a CP2. Um, this has the options of MM or MC, moving magnet or moving coil um, inputs. Um, I think most of the modern turntables typically are only moving magnet, so you might have to only consider a moving magnet phono preamp. I did get the MC moving coil option in here just in case I ever got one with that output. Um, so to show you the back, back setup, I'm going to turn this around and show you how I have it wired up. So what you have to do is take the output of the turntable and plug it into the moving magnet um, input of the, of the phono preamp. Typically, there would only be one input, but this one does have two, like I said. Here's the moving coil input. Here's the moving magnet input. So what I have is this cable running down into the moving magnet input. You also, very important, need the ground wire to be connected from the ground out of the turntable to the ground of the, the phono preamp. This is very important. Without that, there is a lot of buzz that could happen. The buzz is, is like a 60 cycle loud noise. If it was not connected properly, you would definitely know this. Um, the other thing to consider is power. Um, power sources can dramatically increase the, va the value of the sound that you hear. Um, I'm still using the stock power for this phono preamp, but uh, supposedly I think you could upgrade it, I'm not sure, to get a better sound quality. The next stage of the game is now that the signal is in the phono preamp, it gets put to a line level. Now this line level is pretty much equivalent to what you're going to get out of a CD player. What you do is you take the output of the phono preamp and plug that into a line level input on your receiver or um, stereo preamp or integrated amplifier of some sort. Um, you could connect it directly to a power amp and you would have a very pure sound, but you would have no real control over the treble, bass, volume adjustments or EQ curve of any kind um, after the fact. So. 
One common setup is to simply just connect this directly to a set of powered speakers. Um, powered speakers are basically speakers that have an amplifier built into them. Another feature of this phono preamp is the balance. There is a left-right balance, and I typically put that right in the center. Um, there is also a subsonic filter. I don't know 100% what that does. I have that set to off, but um, there's also the sw switch that says moving magnet or moving co co coil. I have it definitely on the moving magnet. Um, those are some other settings to mess with, but for the most part, I don't even touch those. Okay, now that I've twisted my turntable, I've returned it to its proper position, and I'm going to check the leveling on this turntable to make sure that I haven't messed anything up. So I'm using an iPhone, but I'm pretty sure Android has it too. I'm using an app called Bubble Level. And the Bubble Level, I put, simply I put that on the turntable. And as you could see, I have it a little, the tone arm rides from the outside to the inside of the turntable by following the grooves, which are in a spiral pattern from the outside to the inside of the, of the record. Things that could um, affect this behavior are the counterweight, which is back here. That needs to be set to the right amount of weight, either forward or backwards on this very light pendulum. Based on what your owner's manual says, you should adjust that to the right value. There's also something called an anti-skate weight, which is what this is. It's on this model of turntable, it is hanging from some sort of fishing wire and it's just kind of like sits there. I think some of the anti-skate weights are built directly into the counterweight or the tone arm of some, some sort, but this one is dangling off the edge. So to fire this thing up, what you do is there's an on-off switch and that will only start spinning the record, but will do nothing to move the tone arm onto the record. Once it's up to speed, what you do is bring the tone arm in cartridge so that the stylus is right over the edge of the record. There's a little clear space you can see on the edge of the record, and that's where you're supposed to drop the stylus. Next, you pull down this lever, and it slowly lowers the cartridge and stylus onto the record. And I can't let this play for you. So when the record is complete, it will fall into this other clear area and go up against the groove, this inner groove that is going right around the label and sit there and spin continuously until manual intervention occurs and you pull this stylus off and turn the record, right, record player right back off. There are some units you could buy for this turntable that will automatically return, or sorry, automatically lift the cartridge off of the record at the end of the playing. There are some turntables that will automatically return the tone arm to its starting position and turn off the turntable for you. But this one is very much manual, so what you do is return the tone arm and turn it off yourself manually. This is not a problem for me because I tend to sit next to the record as it's playing and actually listen to the music coming out of it and not let it be playing in the background 100% of the time. But sometimes you might get a quick call from the wife to go run out to the store and leave the turntable and record spinning endlessly. That's not something I recommend to anybody. Okay, now going to the next step in the process um, is choosing a receiver to play the music through. Now, all that I said about the phono preamp won't be necessary, 100% um, necessary, if you own a receiver that has a phono preamp built into it. This particular model of Ankyo receiver that I'm using is a phono preamp included. However, I opted for the external phono preamp because of the sound quality you get when you take that and make it a separate component. So to connect my phono preamp to this receiver, I do not use the phono in put on the um, receiver. I use a line-in input. Um, 
After you connect the turntable to the receiver, the next step is simply to make sure you have proper connections from the speaker outs on the receiver to the speakers you've chosen. If you're using active speakers, which are speakers that have an amplifier built in, you will not have to take the step of the receiver into account. You could simply take the line out from the phono preamp and plug that directly into the back near speaker. Okay, you may ask yourself, is my speaker an active speaker or a passive speaker? Well, to find that out, you look at the back of the speaker and see, is there a power switch? If there's a power switch, it's an active speaker. If there's a power switch, you do not require a separate amplifier to use the speaker. You simply take the line out from your phono preamp and plug it into the back of the speaker. Turn the speaker on, adjust the volume, and let it listen to the music. This is an active monitor. A monitor is used for things such as mixing audio and things that need to know a truthful representation of the music. Speakers, on the other hand, this is a passive speaker. This is a Polk Audio speaker and it is passive because there is no on off switch on the speaker. So power needs to come from the amplifier or receiver and power the speakers in a separate component. Passive speakers use speaker wire to connect the audio signal from the amplifier or stereo to the speaker. Active speakers use balanced or unbalanced audio connectors to get the line level signal to them and they get amplified within the speaker themselves. When it comes to choosing proper cabling for these sorts of situations, there are several things to consider. Please see this link above for a reference to my talk based on the thickness and other things to consider when you're buying an audio cable. So that's a basic medium fidelity setup that you may want to opt for. Again, the setup is Project Debut Carbon turntable with an acrylic platter, a Cambridge Audio CP2 phono preamp, an Onkyo stereo receiver. My stereo receiver is only about 50 watts a channel and it puts out just a, the right amount of sound level for this room. And these Polk Audio floor standing speakers, which are 250 for the pair. I would not recommend uh, going anything cheaper than that. Uh, for a pair of speakers unless of course you're going for bookshelf audio speakers which you can probably get away with something cheaper hey everyone I hope you liked this video I hope it was informative for you I hope you got something out of it if you did feel like you got something out of it please click the like button and um, if you want more of this kind of content please click the subscribe button below